Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to another Super Tease video. And we've got another massive 9.1 class update, new legendaries, new PvP talents that are going to completely change the landscape once again <laughs> for PvP. As to those who were wondering, where's the range DPS tier list? Where's this tier list? And this is why I've been postponing them because I had originally thought, oh, that's, that's going to be it. This is a decent amount of changes. I'll start making these uh, predictions, but... Now, there's actually a lot more coming, um, and these ones, particularly for Death Knight, are huge. When you see a Death Knight in LFG or on your friends list, you are going to definitely be checking them out a lot more. You're going to have your eyes going over to them uh, because th this is looking very intimidating. Now, I've got my, my scroller here on Blood Death Knight, uh, and you might be wondering why. Uh, it's because Strangulate here is now available to all Death Knights. It's no longer blood only. So you're going to have Asphyxiate, Blinding Sleet, Syndergosa Stun. You're going to have Asphyxiate, and you're going to have Strangulate. You're going to have an insane amount of lockdown to hold a target in one place, which is going to be a terror for healers. You can also cross crowd control. So say you wanted to go after a healer and a stun, but there's a Paladin, Rep Paladin on another team that could assist them. You could choose to stun the healer and silence the Rep Paladin, preventing them from assisting their healer. This gives you a lot of ways to outplay uh, some of the mechanics in the game that can just totally shut down any kill opportunities in PvP and also allow you to just overwhelm a target if you want to full-on Zug Zug. That's definitely available to you. You're going to see some of the auras shift around for Death Knight. Necrotic Aura is only unholy. Decomposing Aura is only blood. And for blood specifically, there's a talent increasing their heart strike by 60%, but it will also cost 3% of your maximum health. This does make me wonder how good Blood Death Knight could possibly be uh, in PvP in terms of its damage output. Maybe this could be an option in random battlegrounds if you're a solo player and you don't have any healer friends, but you're tired of just dying over and over. Switch over to Blood to get more self-sustainability, and now you also have damage. I'm not sure if 60% is enough to actually make them a competitive spec in 3v3, and usually tanks' viability in PvP ends up being about how well they keep their team alive and Blood Death Knight, I don't think it's particularly that great at it. So this is more of just a personal quality of life change uh, for Blood and as maybe as like a solo player or just as a Blood Death Knight player in general. Uh, but I don't think it's going to have too much of an impact overall. Uh, moving down to Frost Death Knight, which is receiving a significant amount of changes. You are going to be incredibly... Uh, Annoying, uh, to say the least. I don't think people are going to enjoy facing you as a Frost Death Knight if they didn't already. Um, here now with the Bitter Chill Honor talent. Chains of Ice reduces the target's haste by 12%. Frost Strike refreshes the duration of Chains of Ice. So you're going to get some quality of life in your rotation by maintaining your slow through doing damage. And you're going to make the target cast slower. This has great synergies with Shadow Priests, who I believe have an honor talent called Mind Trauma, where when they successfully complete a Mind Flay, they suck haste away from the target. And I would imagine that these both likely work together. That's a huge amount of haste that target doesn't have anymore. They are not going to be doing anything. And I mean, I've seen it uh, pop up once in a while, the Shadow Priest, Death Knight, um, shaman composition in particular, uh, the, these could completely remove a caster, uh, on top of the fact that delirium is now going to automatically stack maximum. So when you howling blast, it's just going to be 50%, uh, recovery rate, cooldown recovery of the movement enhancing abilities. So these targets are going to be casting slower. They're going to be moving immediately less, and you are going to be completely annoying. Um, you are losing Transfusion, which is generating 20 runic power and reducing the runic cost of Death Strike by 50% for 7 seconds. So a little bit of self-sustainability, although I don't think this was taken in too many situations unless it was like overwhelmingly necessary. So I don't think that this is a huge loss um, over getting Strangulate baseline uh, and now getting this ability to just take haste away from, from a target uh, and make things a little bit more annoying. This may also just be part of the process of removing Heartstop Aura. This one is probably a lot less likely to bug out like Heartstop Aura, where it was making spells like five minutes long cooldown. Um, it still functions somewhat the same, like your global cooldown will be slightly slower. Um, your overall pace will be slightly slower, less chance to bug. Maybe it is less impactful, but could be more impactful in other cases. Um, so I'm curious to see how it plays out for Frost, but really unholy 
is the the kind of the staple one to be taking a look at here um, particularly uh, their necrotic strike so necrotic strike is removed and a lot of death is like wait what necrotic strike is removed right because necrotic strike has been a a staple for death knight in pvp and that's kind of been the icon at least in my own mind uh for death knight when i see that necrotic strike stacking up i'm starting to get scared maybe not recently because it just hasn't been that threatening but in the past that's been the main niche it's now replaced with nec necrotic wounds um, which is going to be more passively applied through you dealing damage rather than having to allocate more globals outside of your rotation um, and adding to that sort of quality of life improvement to reducing global cooldowns in general for Unholy, which is pretty demanding. This is actually a nice change. Uh, bursting, a festering wound converts it into a necrotic wound, which absorbs 5% of all healing received for 12 seconds. And it will heal you for the amount absorbed when the effect ends. So you'll get this kind of like time bomb of a heal because you can stack it six times. So... Five times six, 30%. I don't think it's probably additive. Maybe it's additive. Um, it'll be kind of hard to get it all the way with that many stacks, but I'm sure you can during your cooldowns. Uh, and you'll be able to get this massive heal onto yourself as well. So you can overextend and kind of really embrace the the, the Zug Zug Death Knight, how it, how it plays out. I think in a lot of people's minds where it's just kind of just training down healers again you're gonna have asphyxiate you're gonna have strangulate um available to you as well uh to add in all of this extra crowd control and then doom burst which is a new honor talent sudden doom so when you proc your free death coil uh, it's now going to burst up to two festering wounds and reduce the target's movement speed by 45 percent per burst per stack i think um so it looks like you could get this to a 90%. It's almost root a target when you get that sudden doom. So suddenly just pause the target. You pop two wounds, synergizing with necrotic wounds, synergizing with that just constant kind of zombie self-sustainability. Um, so I'm hoping that this achieves that, where, where Unholy Death Knight is that kind of monster healing reduction, running down people, um, because it hasn't been uh, for a really long time. However, you are going to see Ray's Abomination nerfed. It's a two-minute cooldown instead of 1.5. And we know uh, in the, the way that PvP is played, your cooldowns are very important. So having this cooldown, which is a dominant cooldown, nerfed, um, maybe you don't even take it because you're going to have Strangulate competing with it. You're going to have Doom Burst now competing with it. You're going to have Necrotic Wounds competing with it. Maybe you just don't take it now. Uh, and that really depends on the pace of the game as a whole. Um, but it could also be that if you paired up with things like a Holy Priest, and we'll get to Holy Priest later in the video, who are going to provide you cooldown reductions, then maybe getting that Abomination a little bit faster might be useful to you. But I'm hoping that this Necrotic Wounds Derm Doom Burst kind of combo means that Unholy Death Knight has a niche to all of these counter heal mechanics that are being stacked right now, right? You, you see a lot of teams playing with Ferals and Rep Paladins, Enhancement Shamans, and there's a lot of healing available on the team overall. So I'm hoping that th this allows Unholy Death Knight to come in. There's possible new synergies with classes, like I said, with Shadow Priest. There's synergies with Feral now having Mortal Wounds. There's synergy maybe with Fury Warrior. There's a lot of different combinations that you're going to need to consider now uh, for Death Knight. And we haven't even gotten to the, the last part, which is available to all Death Knights here, uh, which is now Death's Echo. Death's Advance, Death and Decay, and Death Grip have an additional charge. You, you don't need a Legendary, but you can get the Legendary if you want to get the Legendary. The, so you're going to have a lot of Death Grips. Uh, this one is going to be competing with a lot of other high-priority Honor Talents. Um, I almost feel like we need a PvP set bonus that's you get an extra Honor Talent, because to fit all of this in... It's gonna be really hard. It's gonna be really hard to fit all of this in. There's just so much stuff you can't you can't really put it all there. Um, but being able to get two deaths advanced means you're gonna be sprinting. You can't be slowed. Um, you're gonna be getting two deaths and decays, which could synergize really well with a night fade death knight. Uh, I do actually wonder how that would work. You could drop two of these down and then maybe just get them stuck stuck inside of it. Um, there's opportunities for night fade uh, death knight with this. And then Death Grip just having two charges is obviously insane because you can just grip a target, they blink, grip the target, they cast something, grip it, they cast it, grip it, and the Abomination Limb, grip it. Like you're just gonna be gripping everything. Um, now, Spell Warden, uh, Rune of Spell Warden is applied to you with 100% increased effect, and this is kind of the shield. Um, you're probably not gonna take this Rune Forge because you lose so much damage not having the Crusader. So I, I really doubt it, but mm, maybe in some niche situation, if it's. If spellcasters are just blasting everybody, you could switch your weapon over to one with spell warding, and then you'll be more tanky and durable. Could be a little bit of a strategy option. I'm not the biggest fan of this one because it's kind of like a more of a passive stall based um, option. 
Uh, but this could also be really good for you as a Blood Death Knight flag carrier, uh, getting that extra durability while you're holding the flag. Again, mobility ends up usually trumping everything. Now, Demon Hunter, we, we saw this talent come in, Blood Moon, but it's kind of been nerfed and kind of made a little bit more boring. Um, this is now Consume Magic, now affects all enemies within eight yards of the target, so you can just purge down multiple targets, uh, and it will also grant you 5% leech. So a little bit of self-sustainability uh, and the ability to like mass, kind of almost like Blood Elf uh, Purge. Um, but it used to grant you Spectral Sight and could let you basically stealth when you stood still. Maybe that was too much. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe they didn't want that extra little flavor. I thought that this was coming in to try and prevent people who were re-stealthing too much so that you can kind of try and hunt them down more. That's what I thought. But that part of it isn't, uh, isn't going to be happening. It's just going to be a little bit more sustainability in an AoE purge. Uh, maybe this opens up the table for hunters and demon hunters with the tranquilizing uh, shot honor talent that we saw for hunter that lets you just strip down buffs really quickly and then the demon hunter can then also purge on top of that uh, all of these new honor talents are kind of making me think that you can mix and match classes more uh, when it comes to pvp specifically which is really great uh, now moving down to boomkin uh, stellar drift is now only going to reduce the cooldown of starfall by 12 seconds rather than 15 i know pve players still don't care because it's still going to be I think a DPS loss in AOE, um, but Prickling Thorns has been removed. I think this makes sense. This talent contradicted itself. It's like you had to root the target to get a dot that breaks the root, so you no longer get the dot. It just didn't really wasn't really working in my, in my opinion. Uh, maybe if it applied a separate debuff that was a dot that remained and persisted after the root ended, it would have been really good. But the way it was was just not, so it's gone. It's replaced with Starburst, and I had to log on to see what this was because I was like, wait, what the hell is that? Starfall has a chance to call down collapsing stars. Enemies that come into contact with a star cause it to burst, knocking up nearby enemies and dealing 280% of spell damage. It ends up being 6,000 arcane damage, and it also generates 15 astral power even though this is zero. The reason that I think that this is not going to work whatsoever, I tried it, it doesn't proc that many, and you would almost think that it's mandatory to run Stellar Drift because you're losing so much to press Starfall instead of Star Surge. Star Surge is your hardest hitting attack, it provides you Moonkin Aura for more crit chance, it, it's really the only way you kill anything in the game as a Boomkin, so to press Starfall instead, it has to do some pretty nutty stuff. Um, so if you run Starfall, the damage of Starfall is still just pretty mediocre in PvP, uh, and it wasn't really generating too many of these things these stars and they were kind of small they looked really cool they're kind of small but then you'd have to run a target into it they don't last very long so if they spawn somewhere off in the corner and you have no way to get there to get targets to run into them it could be cool as like a little bit of a trap like this moon can trap against maybe melee dps that are attacking you you know you star fall with stellar drift move cast and like bait them into these stars on the ground to try and get them to blow up like it actually does seem really cool and fun but the practicality and then the reality of getting it to work, just I don't see it happening. So when I first read this, I was like super excited and stoked. But after I see the way that it looks, it could be pr maybe pretty good in a battleground. I mean, if tar there's a lot of targets stacked up like that, I mean, that's usually when you're supposed to star fall. So maybe this isn't taking into consideration 3v3 arena and just battlegrounds. Uh, but again, you lose a lot to not press star surge, basically. Maybe they should make Moonkin Aura work with Starfall too, so you can stack them, so at least you're not losing out on that. Um, but yeah, I was, I was a little bit sad about this one. Uh, Hunter, I don't know how to take this, but we're just going to ignore it, because <laughs> I, I don't want to take it the wrong way with their legendary Wailing Arrow. Uh, we're looking at Paladin, and Paladin seems to be the main, uh, kind of what do, you, what do you want to say, the menace right now, when it comes to PvE balance, because they do so much damage on top of healing. So they are just getting their damage nerfed across the board by 8% on pretty much everything for Holy. Um, and nerfed, it looks like, by 10% on Judgment specifically. So no more big, big damage judges, it looks like. Um, which is a tuning change for PvE, but Paladin is still prevalent in PvP. I wouldn't say that it's necessarily because of the damage that they're doing. So this is kind of a nerf to a... Back. I can't even I don't feel like Holy Paladin is still doing pretty well. It's just you need to play with mages. Although mages are getting nerfed pretty hard. I think Paladin might end up in a really awkward spot in PvP. So these nerfs, while they make sense in PvE, could actually put you in a pretty bad spot. Uh, and then also Infusion of Light is now going to change. I don't know why they don't just go back to the original Infusion of Light, where just Holy Light is faster. This one also just doesn't seem 
amazing, at least to me. Maybe PVEers out there that know more about PVE can tell me otherwise, but for PVP, it doesn't seem that good. Uh, your, your critical holy shocks reduce the cost of your next flash of light by 30%. That's not changing. Uh, or cause your next holy light to generate one holy power so you can get more word of glory. Holy light is still really slow. So good luck getting that off in PVP. This is, is all I can really say. Um, I, I'm not sure how this really incentivizes you. I mean, maybe it's meant to be a nerf to Holy Light. I'm not sure. Uh, and then Crusader's Might is also getting nerfed, which is, gives probably PVE. Crusader Strike uh, reduces the cooldown of Holy Shock by one second, down from 1.5. So you're getting less Holy Shocks to proc confusion, and you're doing less damage overall. Maybe if you're opting to not take this, you probably still take it in, in, in Mythic Plus. Um, now moving down to... Let's see. There's a lot of changes that aren't relevant uh, to Priest. So for Symbols of Hope, they are now allowing Symbols of Hope to bolster the morale of raid members within 40 yards. They each recover 60 seconds of cooldown of a major defensive ability and regain 18% of their missing mana. Uh, so trying to turn Holy Priest into this cooldown battery, mana battery, give them that as their unique identity. This could also be pretty cool in PvP. Uh, there's certain cooldown exchanges that are now going to be kind of messed with and i think if you run night fey holy priest in pvp that's also going to have some pretty big impact um being able to reduce the major defensive cooldowns of your teammates your greater fade is getting nerfed i think this makes sense um greater fade is just really powerful it's just a very low cooldown ice block in a lot of cases uh, and then finally we're going to be looking at the legendaries uh for for priest which is uh, Bonsomdi's Pact. Each time you take damage from Shadowward Death, your Fey Guardians are active. Or your Fey Guardians are active. Your Fairy's effectiveness is increased by 25%. So encouraging you to use Shadowward Death outside of the norm uh, to try and get some extra cooldown or cooldown reduction from your Fairies, which is I think the most notable buff uh, from the Night Fey Priest. PvP giving up your Death to not avoid crowd control is pretty tough. Uh, so maybe you're not going to go for that. And then here I've seen some PVEers saying that this is these are actually DPS loss. <laughs> so Shadow Word Manipulation uh, is going to be Mind Games gains one additional charge, but at cast time is increased by 50%. Now in PvP, if you can slip two Mind Games through, like one gets dispelled and then you get another one off, that's really threatening. But it's also slower, so you have more time to see it and react to it. Could be really good, could be hit or miss. Um, these legendaries are, in my mind, some, a bit more strange when it comes to the Covenant-specific legendaries. And my own personal take on the Covenant-specific legendaries is that it's locking you even further behind a gate. Like, if you go after this Covenant and you level your Renown to the max, and then you also commit it to the Covenant legendary, when you want to switch, now you've got to level not only the Renown, but you've got to reroll your legendary. So there's a lot of, I mean, you could say that's meaningful choice. Maybe it is. But to me, it's an incredible frustration. Also, if these things get changed at all, then again, you get the rug pulled under you and you've committed to this and then it's like a th double tap to try and try and fix it. So it's, it can be a, a big risk to go after these legendaries. Just, just a personal note from me. Uh, and then finally, well not finally, but we'll get to Shaman, Elemental. Uh, this is a lot of text, but Control the Lava is being changed. So your Flame Shock's uh, gonna tick more frequently. And then if it gets dispelled, the target will get knocked up in the air by a volcano and take some damage. At the moment, the damage is very lackluster. It's not like an unstable affliction dispel. Uh, and the knockback is also pretty negligible in terms of you don't really need to care. Uh, my biggest concern with this is the, uh, the paladin talent that we saw come in, where when you judge, it dispels one magic thing off of everyone around you pretty much. Uh, and then everyone was like, well, all the Ellie Shamans are out of the game because your Flame Shocks are just going to be gone. So I don't know if this will trigger three times on a Paladin that dispels three of them um, or a Mistweaver that revivals three of them. Is it going to be three Volcanoes that hit them? Because that could be a lot of damage. Uh, and this is maybe coming in as a direct counter to that mechanic specifically, which makes me think that they want to keep that mechanic, which I don't think is the best. Um, having Paladin, Ret, Prod, or Holy just AoE dispelling magic. Although... Uh, yeah, that 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 one right there is like the main main concern culprit, and this comes into as like almost just a counter to that. It also could open your up op your options to play with something other than a lock that gives you some help to, with unstable affliction, but it's not punishing enough really to to do that. And then seasoned wind is getting nerfed, so rather than twenty percent damage reduction for twelve seconds, it's only fifteen percent. Um, 
again, this could have some big, uh, big implications in terms of your all durability. Still not sure why it's why they want to focus it around like magic damage in particular. Although I guess a lot of classes actually don't really deal physical. There's maybe like only like outlaw and fury. So actually, this could, this could this could mean a lot if you interrupt a shadow priest and you're taking less damage from a death knight. Uh, it could have some very what do you want to say fortifying effects uh, in terms of your durability. Rapid Contagion is now going to be for the next 15 seconds. All of your damage over effect, time effects uh, occur 33% more often rather than 30% more often. A little bit of a dot buff. Uh, and then finally, we're going to see Warriors have Overwatch removed. Uh, when you intervene an ally, they gain Spell Reflect for 5 seconds or until the spell is canceled. So Overwatch is going to be gone. No more double Spell Reflects. Pretty massive nerf in terms of utility and some outplay value. Basically means that intervene is now exclusively going to be used to stop damage and physical damage and redirect it to the warrior um, or maybe intercept a, a sap or something um, but they're getting a new honor talent which doesn't really make a lot of sense to me and i'm not sure what the purpose is of uh, warbringer which used to be charged on i think it's not <laughs> in this instance charge roots enemies for two seconds and emanates a shockwave past the target rooting enemies in a 10 yard cone so you charge it and then just root everything around it uh, behind it it looks like it could it looks like its visual could sound really cool, but in terms of its practicality, I don't know why you would take this. I feel like there's so many high priority honor talents that I don't know why you would take this um, as a warrior in PvP. So that one was just a bit kind of lackluster. And then again, I think Windwalker monks are still, you know, peering and trying to see what's coming in 9.1. Uh, but regardless, if you like this video, leave it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. I'm doing my best to bring these updates to you as soon as possible when I see them. Uh, and other than that, comment down below with what you what you like about 9.1. Does it look like it's going to be a completely different game to you? Are you interested in checking out any of these different synergies? Um, because I know for me it is, and there's a lot to talk about. So I'd like to hear what you have to say. And other than that, thank you very much for watching the video. I will see you in the next one.